I have a little uh, board set up here um, to demonstrate some of the functional functionality of uh, this gyro. And uh, so I've got my receiver, and what I have is I have in addition to the in addition to the gain wire being plugged into the receiver, I've got it hooked up to a Y connector, so it's also hooked up to this servo. So not only does the gyro see the gear switch position, but so does this servo. So you can kind of see visually how this works. Okay, and then the tail servo is uh, right here. Okay, or, or I should say. It doesn't matter if you've got the gyro hooked up to your tail or your aileron or whatever, but this so this servo right here is driven by the gyro. Okay. So in the full clockwise position, that's positive 100% for the gear, and this is negative 100%. So when the when the servo is in this direction, it is in rate mode and the light is off on this gyro and when it's fully to the right it is in heading hold mode. The closer that you get to the center is going to be a lower gain. Okay, So th if this be in heading hold, when I lower the travel adjust on the transmitter here, I'm going to, right now it's at 100%, I'm going to lower it to about 50%, okay? So the gear switch is at 50% and that servo is at 50% movement. That is approximately 50% heading hold gain. Okay? So flip it over the rate and right now the travel adjust shows 100%. If I lower that to around 30%, okay, you can see which way the servo is moving. It's getting closer to center. All right? and that's a lower for rate mode. So if I flip the switch, I can go back and forth between heading hold to rate mode. The gyro sees that servo uh, position and it, that's how it knows wh whether it's supposed to be in rate mode or heading hold mode. Most of these gyros, when, when you get very, very close to a zero gain in rate mode, well, actually act like the gyro does nothing. It's almost like turning it off. Okay, so if you hear people say, I turned the gyro off using the gain, what they're saying is that they're setting a very, very, very low rate mode gain. Okay, so let me uh, bump this up here and then you can see some of the servo movements. So I've got a rate mode of uh, 50%, it's about a 50% gain, and this servo, he, this gyro here is driving this servo. So I know that I'm in rate mode because I turn, I turn the gyro, it'll bump and then it'll come back to center position. Rate mode is a dampening effect. It, it controls the rate of the rotation, okay? So if, I, if, the, if the, the gyro rotates, while it's rotating, it's going to bump this, the servo, but once you stop rotation, it's going to come back to center. So, whichever direction I bump that uh, gyro, the servo is going to go in the opposite direction to compensate. Now, if I switch over to heading hold mode, do so you can see this, all right? When I move that gyro, that servo is going to move and it's going to stay moved to that direction. So I rotated it some and that servo is still over there trying to go in the opposite direction. Okay? So if I go to the so I rotate this clockwise, that servo is going to move in the other direction. It's going to stay there. It's in heading hold. It's trying to keep making a control movement until that that gyro comes back. Now in this particular case it's not going to come back perfectly to center every time. Right? I can I can center that up by bringing it back and forth just like that. So once again, what's the difference between heading hold and rate? Here's the difference. If, when I'm in heading hold and I move it's gonna and then stop that servo is going to move and stay there. Okay. 
when I'm in rate mode, when I move that gyro, it's going to bu just bump and try to try to bring it back. But once you stop that movement, okay, it's going to come back to center. Now, in flight, what's going to happen is that something is going to is going to jerk the airplane and and instead of the whatever if you have the gain turned up enough it's going to it's going to bring it back you know all on its own okay so in flight what will happen is that you'll see your control surface kind of bobble a little bit okay but it's not going to jerk to the side and left so if you have it say the gyros on ailerons what will happen is that normally if you get a big gust of wind you'll see the uh, the airplane um sort of the wings will like roll to one side and it'll jerk and then you make the manual correction what will happen is that you'll get a gust of wind and you'll just see a, a slight twitch and the gyro will compensate and, and keep it level in the case of uh, let's say that you have your gyro on the yaw axis on the on the rudder and you're taking off and you you gun the airplane instead of the airplane yawing on you doing a ground loop what's going to happen is that uh, as it gets going it'll kind of bump a little bit and then it'll come back now takeoff's a little different because you do need some airspeed and so forth across the across the control surface so it's going to be a, it's going to be a balance between the tail wheel making the compensation and 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 the rudder so if you've got a loose tail wheel one that's not attached to the rudder things will be a little bit different but for the most part um, what I said holds true one thing about gyros is that you um, you want to use the minimal amount of gain that you can get good results with. Um, I don't recommend, at least at the very beginning, to just crank up the gain as high as you can and say, well, I can get 80% gain. A lot of the gain value that you end up with is going to be affected by the mechanical aspects of your uh, control surface that you've got it connected up to. How fast are, are the servos? How much deflections in there? Uh, the mechanical slop uh, and so forth. How fast is the airplane flying? Um, if you have a gyro and it's set up on an airplane in flight, um, the faster you go, um, what's going to happen is that if you have too much of a gain, you'll start to get some vibration or flutter. You won't see that flutter at a low speed because aerodynamically there's less gain in the control surface um, depending upon what that control surface is, especially uh, uh, the ailerons. The faster you get going, the more that the, uh, the airspeed across those ailerons can affect it. Elevator can be a little bit different in, in terms of going faster, allowing more of a <clears throat> more of a pitch rate um, but I recommend uh, as a generic rule to use about a 30% value for your for your gain whenever you're setting something up for an initial flight if you see that it's not holding it steady like you want then you can slowly crank that up in five to ten uh, click increments but you don't want to just jump in there and start off with a hundred percent gain because what's going to happen is that you'll take off and if you've got it on the aileron or the elevator it'll just start to wobble. If that happens, pitch up so that you, you've got some time and space and slow down. Is if you speed up, what's gonna happen is that flutter is gonna get even worse. If you have it set up on a switch so that you can change the gyro gr gain, great. Lower that gain or flip the switch so that the, uh, that the gyro is essentially turned off. Um, but you do not want to have your initial flights set up for a high uh, gain rate. 30% is a good value, I think, uh, to, to start off with.